Welcome to The Bachelor, MLB edition. Now on today's episode, we have two fine bachelors on the market that you can take home today. So without further ado, let's introduce you to our first bachelor. Bachelor A is born and raised in sunny San Diego, the best city in the world, and he has been off to a hot start to start the season. But of course, this wouldn't be The Bachelor if we didn't provide options. So let's welcome to the stage Bachelor B. Let's look at the key differences between these two bachelors. Bachelor A, he gets on base a little more than Bachelor B. Bachelor B, he hits for a little more power than Bachelor A. But at the end of the day, if you look at their OPS, it's about the same. Which reminds me, if you want to know more about OPS, you should watch my last video. Anyways, let's go back to the game show. Let's try to differentiate Bachelor A and Bachelor B through one more statistic. Wins above replacement. Or, war. Now war is an all-inclusive stat that just shows how much better a player is than a replacement player. Very theoretical. So when I say that Bachelor A has a .2 war and Bachelor B has a .3 war, I'm saying that they're both slightly better than the average replacement player. But I guess this doesn't help much because we're trying to decide between Bachelor A and Bachelor B. But what about their baggage? What comes with taking these bachelors home today? Well, with Bachelor A, you'll have to pay him about $1.5 million a year, every single year just to keep him at home. Now, that may seem like a lot until you realize that Bachelor B, you're gonna have to pay him about $30 million a year in emotional fees. Wait, what's that? You have a decision? Bachelor A? Well, Bachelor A it is then. Good decision. Let's see who you're taking home today. Bachelor A, could you please introduce yourself? Runner to foul ground and over goes Garcia! A high drive to right field. Back goes Drury looking up and it is gone! And a liner to left center field. That's going to get into the gap. Hey, congrats. You've won Greg Garcia. Now, you might not know who he is at this point, but that's okay. He's a complete steal. Now, of course, we're gonna have to see who you missed out on. So, Bachelor B, would you please introduce yourself? And he's drilled, and Manny's going after him. And here we go. And Manny and Ventura are going. Left side, hit hard, right at Arcia. Bang into the right leg. Travis Shaw said it was a dirty play. Yelich said it was a dirty play by a dirty player. I wonder what your response would be to those. I play baseball. Oh, shoot. Is that who I think it is? That's Manny Machado. Look, let's be real. Manny's been absolute garbage to begin the season. And I know if you're a Padres fan watching this, you either want to kill me right now for being a Manny hater, or you are just as frustrated as I am. Either way, this video isn't me trashing Manny or demanding Manny to be traded right now. I want him to be successful. It's better for the team. But a wise man once said, in order to fix your problems, you have to identify them first. So this is what's wrong with Manny Machado. Now my good friend and fellow Bruin, Trevor Bauer, was telling me the other day a story about Manny. Let's take a listen. Manny Machado is hot here against me uh, on every pitch and will not swing at anything uh, about there or anywhere else out here. So I basically have this little zone right in here where he'll swing at fastballs occasionally, but he will also hit those. Thanks Trevor for that story. It's really cool and I'm pretty entertained, but I also saw this the other day. Wow, that one running in and Machado strikes out. So clearly Manny's still swinging at that pitch inside, but it doesn't seem like he's hitting it anymore. So have things changed? What exactly is Manny doing this season? Well, let's look at his hot zones. I took a stretch of 10 games from August 3rd to August 13th, and these were Manny Machado's hot zones. Well, that's uh, not very good to say the least. He has 
two hot zones. And if you consider the fact that out of all the top inside pitches, there are only two balls put into play, Manny really only has one legitimate hot zone, the bottom inside corner. We really got a terrible version of Manny this year. So what does it usually look like when Manny's hitting well? Well, let's look at Manny's best season, 2018, where he set his career highs in home runs, batting average, OBP, slugging, and basically any other stat that matters. Now that hot zone chart looks super different. But look at how the pitchers are pitching him this year. In the same 10 game stretch we just looked at, 16 out of 17 inside pitches that were put into play were fastballs, while only 1 out of 9 outside pitches were fastballs. They're basically pitching him hard in, soft out. There's two reasons for that. Manny is killing the fastball low and in, which means he's sitting fastball and he sped up his bat in order to get to that pitch. So how do you offset that? You throw him soft away to keep him honest. That's the first reason. Now this second reason is the thesis of the video. Look at Manny's hot zones again. Back in 2018, Manny wasn't a very good low ball hitter. But in these 10 games in 2020, 4 out of his 8 hits are off of fastballs low and in. I'm going to go on a limb and say that Manny has a little bit more of an uppercut in his swing this season. Almost every stat seems to support this. His pop up percentage is at a career high, his ground ball percentage is at a career low, his launch angle isn't even close to anything he's put up in recent years. The reason why this is a problem is because Manny's getting under his pitch. 2020 Manny simply hasn't been able to square up any of the fastballs that are coming right down the middle. In fact, in these 10 games, he's had 11 fastballs down the middle and fouled off 7 of them. And a lot of these times, he's just under the ball. The thing is, baseball's a game of failure, but that's not just for hitters, it also applies to pitchers. Manny doesn't have to be able to hit the curve, he doesn't have to get to the fastball in the outside corner, he doesn't have to excel at any of these things to be a great hitter. Pitchers will miss their spot, and Manny will get his pitch. And if he could just hit his pitch, maybe we'd be able to ignore his defense. I'm still a believer. Potter's 2020, baby.